So if you look at the graph that Scott's showing right now, you can just see this gigantic spike, like vertical spike upwards, where suddenly they're like one of the one of the most talked about 3D printer companies. Paul, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the 3D printing industry in the last few weeks, maybe months. Uh, definitely lots of new products coming out, and uh, Black Friday is just a few days away. Uh, so uh, as a, as the first thing that definitely comes to mind is the obviously not so new, but just a few weeks old launch of a Kickstarter campaign by Elegoo. Uh, you know, what do we know so far about it? How's it doing? And uh, how do you feel about it? Yeah, so like... Uh Elegoo launched their new super large format 3D printer, so the Orange Storm Giga, bit of a handful of a name. Um, and it is really different from, you know, most consumer 3D printers out there right now because this has a absolutely gigantic build volume, 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters by one meter. So this is definitely several times bigger than, you know, most consumer 3D printers out there when you're talking about maybe like a, 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter build volume. Um, so I am super excited about it because like, you know, there's, there's nothing really out there and I really want to print giant things. Like the first thing I can think of is, you know, uh, maybe a giant cosplay, like armor suit or something like that. And um, I think the community really likes it too, because like, if you look at it right now, it's, it, it's, I think it raised something like 5 million, like Canadian with like 2000 backers. So there's definitely people out there who really want a printer this big. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive. For those of you who obviously don't know, uh, Paul and I are in Canada, so everything on Kickstarter here is automatically in Canadian dollars, but it's a pretty impressive amount of money to raise just within a few weeks with 42 days to go. Um, would you say that there's been a lot of demand for this already in the market and Elegoo is kind of just tapping into something that the market was, the audience was craving for quite a bit? Yeah, I think so, because there's a lot of people who wanted bigger and bigger and bigger 3D printers. So like, yeah, as you're scrolling down, you see that Elegoo has released, you know, a, a number of FDM printers. So their Neptune series, their Neptune 3, 4, and then they have the Plus and then finally the Max. Um, and even then, I think that caps out of something like 42 centimeters by 42 centimeters. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who want something even bigger. So the Orange Storm Giga, it's like 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters by one meter. So there's nothing else in the market, at least on the consumer front, that's like that. So this is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely not something that we would see on a consumer market. I remember when uh, Bamboo Labs was launching their brand new printer, A1 Mini. Everybody thought that it's going to come out with some kind of XL, uh, the large size uh, 3D printing model, but they didn't. And then Elugu comes out and they're just like, hey, here's a, here's what you wanted. You think that was just a coincidence or do you think that they've been planning to release that for a while? I mean, to develop a printer like that, that probably takes some time. Yeah, I think they had this in the works for a while. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily in response to Bamboo Labs um, A1, but I guess just the timing just matches up when people really wanted a big printer from Bamboo Labs. Elegu just stepped in saying, hey, we got a really, really big one. Yeah. No, and that's, this is an interesting thing about Elegu is that they do have FDM printers, and but... If, if, if we look at our own rankings on our own website, 3dgearzone.com, they are really strong in the SLA niche, right? Uh, this is reviews that you obviously do a lot hands-on with the team. And uh, the top five, four out of top five are pretty much all Elegoo. And then if we do look at FDM printers, we uh, Elegoo is not really in the top five list. Do you feel like this is going to be different with the Orange Storm Giga? What is the expectation for quality of, of the prints that we have here? So with the quality, um, um, Elegoo did step up from, you know, their older printers where they had like different extruders, different hot ends. Um, looking at what we know of the Storm Giga, it's, it's one of their newer direct drive extruders with a really big melt zone so we're expecting good quality fast prints coming out of it and 
um, hopefully, you know, what, if this does really well, that technology kind of gets passed down to their smaller um, FDM printers and um, be able to compete with everyone else. Yeah, and it's not. It doesn't just print one object at a time. It actually prints multiple ones, right? Is so that, yeah, is this like, an upgrade. Is that what? Is, what is? Yeah, it I think I think it's an upgrade from what Eliku has told us. So you can strap up to four different nozzles on it, or mm -hmm. four for for uh, hot end specifically, and have them all print at the same time. This is a little bit different compared to say a tool changer or an IDEX printer. So um, for context. Um, a tool changer or an IDEX printer lets you print multiple different colors and materials into the same print. This is kind of having four different nozzles side by side. So they print <clears throat> at the same time, but it's not like you can do multiple colors or multiple materials inside the same print. It is four separate prints, but at the, at, uh, the same time. Yeah. So basically each print is a one color, but you can make the one out of four to be, or whatever number of four, it can be different colors between the four of them, um, which is an interesting approach. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it, I, given the size of the printer, that would be interesting to see how they, how they tackle it. And I know that from our own business, uh, we, we also operate obviously a 3D printing services company here in Toronto, Design Dynamics. And uh, we do get quotes from businesses to do large prints like furniture. I would imagine that this would be pretty much a, the print, the application for this type of a printer, right? Exactly. Like um, if you want to print, say, you know, a, a small table or a chair like if you use any other um like consumer 3d printer you have to do it in multiple pieces even with the largest ones but this mm -hmm. lets mm -hmm. you kind of do this in one shot and i think that's like printing you know like furniture would be the perfect use case for like a giant 3d printer like this yeah and they're pretty much sold out on all of the different tiers here and the earliest uh deliver deliveries are going to be pretty much april 2024 so for those of you who are watching now uh, in november 2023 there is still time to contribute to the campaign it's already at five five more than five million dollars more than two thousand backers uh definitely something to in our opinion, to be excited about. I think that uh, the, the market has been craving a large size printer. Uh, it's pretty obvious from the uh, launch of the Bamboo A1 Mini, a lot of the chatter on, on Facebook and various uh, 3D printing groups was the expectation of some kind of a extra large size printer. And CEO of Bamboo Labs, I remember watching one of the episodes, uh, I don't remember which, which particular, I think CNC Kitchen or one of the basically channels on YouTube, they were interviewing the CEO of Bamboo Lab and he said, we understand that the, that's what the market wants and we will be delivering on it shortly. Didn't say when, but probably 2024. So it's going to be interesting how the competition will heat up between the uh, Orange Giga Eligu's uh, printer and then the Bamboo Lab when they launch theirs. Uh, speaking of A1 Mini, how do, you, uh, how do you feel about that particular model? Is there anything... Is there anything special about it? Is, is there is Bamboo Lab innovating in the space here, or is this something that is kind of already exists? So they're just doing it slightly better. Yeah, so I, I guess I'll, I'll get the the big thing out of the room right now. But a lot of people in the three D printing community were kind of a little bit disappointed with the A one Mini because they were hoping that. Um, to get you know a bamboo labs excel because uh right now the the x1 kind of caps out at 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters there's a lot of people hoping for a bigger 3d printer um for you know larger prints cosplay props something like that um like me myself was including that i was like we're hope i was hoping for something big but when the a1 mini came out um because it is a bit smaller i think it's something like 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters so it is a bit smaller than um um the the original one um but um what this thing brought to the table was all the really cool automated smarts of the x1 into a kind of smaller cheaper ready to go package and um I think it, this thing is really targeted to something like, you know, maybe like a school or an education um, market because um, like, like 3D printing is starting to get popular enough that um, you know, like a lot of kids kind of want to 
dabble into it and teachers think that's a really cool piece of tech to bring into the classroom but i'm pretty sure most teachers don't want to spend hours on end like tinkering tuning setting up a 3d printer versus the bamboo labs a1 one of the big selling points is like you just grab it out of the box plug it in and press go and it also has you know bamboo labs um ams the automatic material system where you can do multiple colors or multiple materials um and that's a really cool feature that not many printers have and being able to bring that into the classroom where it's like you press a button and it's all set up ready to go that's really really cool yeah it's that's for sure i mean and given that a lot of the bamboo lab 3d printer models are very very good at working straight out of the box a box uh it definitely um definitely is a perfect type of a tool for a, a a school environment where teachers don't want to spend half an hour fixing fixing a printer if the class is only 45 minutes right so uh definitely works i think not to compare bamboo lab to apple by any means but uh, apple did enter you know uh, the education sp space first before they kind of i think went into mass market they would really want it to dominate there so maybe bamboo lab is applying a similar practice a similar strategy um but uh, we 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 are looking to acquire the model to test it for ourselves. We don't have it yet, uh, based on what we've seen so far. It's definitely in demand. People are buying quite a few uh, of those models, uh, and uh, it would be interesting to see. You know, kind of put our hands on it, test it out, and then uh, definitely the review is going to be available on 3dgearzone.com. So for anybody who is listening, make sure to check it out. And while we're at it, uh, this our first episode so if you are enjoying it so far if you think that this is good content and something that helps you learn more about the industry be sure to uh, show some love comment like subscribe below and even if you don't like it leave a comment let us know how we can improve now kind of moving on to the uh, something that bamboo lab is doing again which is changing the changing the industry uh, one step at a time one innovation at a time they did launch the maker world quite a quite a few months ago i would say but uh, it's interesting to see how quickly this platform has grown from pretty much being new to the industry and now having th thousands of products as well as people who are downloading and how do you feel about it so far so uh at first, I thought, okay, this is just like another Thingiverse. So just just in case, Maker World, um, Thingiverse, these these websites are kind of just like websites where people upload their 3D models, where people yeah. can download them and then place them on the printer. So there's a couple of them um, right now. Um, Thingiverse is, I think, one of the OG ones out there. So it's probably one of the most popular. But then uh, Prusa made their own, I think it's called Printables. There's another company called Thangs. And then now there is um, the latest one from Bamboo Labs Maker World. Um, so at first, most people are like, oh, okay, it's just another Thingiverse. People upload their their, their files. That's that's it. But I think the, the cool thing about Maker World is because it is tied into the Bamboo Labs ecosystem, um, one thing that you can do is actually just send it to whatever file they have there directly to your 3D printer. So if you see this really cool, you know, robot cell phone holder that um, Scott's showing right now, there's actually a button that says like um, open in Bamboo Studio. And that actually sends it directly to the app, which you can just press print and it'll print for you. So it's kind of like one, um, like a one step stop shop to get your file into your printer you just find what you like click print and it just starts printing so that's really really cool and that's the only and the biggest difference right between existing printables and uh you know uh, codes codes 3d and, and the maker world is essentially they're just adding this full integration into their own slicer to to just avoid any extra steps in between that's pretty yeah. much all it is right pretty much so it is limited to you know like bamboo labs um printers at the moment um so yeah you'll have to get an x1 a p1p or or an a1 if, if you manage to get one of those and then um that functionality is there so if if you're you know like um used to a prusa printer or a creality printer or something like that you won't have that functionality at least not yet um Maybe in the future, Bamboo Labs will open this up for other printers, but right now it's just limited to the Bamboo systems. Yeah, yeah, and I'm that. This is kind of 
kind of cool in, in, in a way that Bamboo Lab looks at the industry, looks at, I would argue, how stale some of the things were. Mm -hmm. Like every year there's a new model of the printer from a lot of the manufacturers, but it's just a slight upgrade, maybe change the mm -hmm. name, maybe a slight improvement here and there. And then Bamboo Lab comes in and they're like basically saying, hey, we don't want the small incremental changes, we want something different, right? And uh, they, it really solidified their position, I think, in the market as the kind of a new uh, comer. And if we do look at the data, you found something interesting about the actual market trend going on right now, just based on Google data, we're basically seeing that there is this, this, this huge demand for Bamboo Lab. Yeah, so when they came out um, last year's, um, back in 2022, they were basically uh, like like no one has heard of them because they were a brand new company. But the second they started uh, releasing their printers and just talking about it, people were extremely excited. So if you look at the graph that Scott's showing right now, you could just see this gigantic spike, like vertical spike upwards, where suddenly they're like one of the one of the most talked about three D printer companies out there. Um, it just shows how much people are 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 like talking about Bamboo Labs and what they're bringing to the market. Yeah, and uh, the graph compares Bamboo Lab and Creality. Creality being obviously a very well-known brand, a reliable brand, uh, uh, depending on the model, but <laughs> quite a reliable <laughs> brand and very well-known brand. Uh, and uh, how, you know, how Bamboo Lab is just on par with them now in terms of the interest over time. Uh, we're looking at Google Trends here. Uh, and uh, this is definitely... It, interesting how bamboo labs innovation and kind of you know how them chal challenging the market is essentially helping them to capture a lot greater share of voice here uh and and bring themselves to the forefront of the 3d printing industry now uh, on the topic of uh you know interesting things going on in the market uh black friday is coming up so uh, there's definitely a lot that uh, Black, Fr uh, that Black Friday, a lot of Black Friday deals are already available, right? So some of the things that uh, you kind of send the links to were, uh, were the Creality, the Bamboo Labs, the Elegoo. Mm -hmm. So anything, anything that really caught your eye in particular? Yeah, so um, I guess off the bat, Black Friday is actually really, really good for 3D printers. Like, I think in general, you see something like between fifty to two hundred dollars off on average um, for you know some of the most popular 3D printers out there. Um, so one that for me personally really caught my eye um, on the bamboo side was their um, P1P and P1S uh, 3D printers. Um, so these ones are are Bamboo Labs already more affordable. Um, uh, 3D printers, so they have most of the smarts of the the, the high end X1, but in a much cheaper package. So for, um, in general, I think the P1, P, and P1S is under under around like eight nine hundred dollars Canadian normally, or like six ninety nine USD. Um, right now, you can get them for a hundred dollars off um, uh, USD or uh, something like that. So I think if I remember correctly, the P1P is already like. Or P1S is something like five ninety nine, which is basically a steal for 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 that money. So that's so that's great. Um, and then if you get their their combos with AMS, you save even more. But um, but like uh, yeah, you already save quite a bit with with um, these printers on Black Friday. For sure, and this is kind of unexpected because a, a lot of folks were ar were arguing that bamboo lab models will never go on sale, <laughs> right? There's, everyone would be like, "Is there ever going to be sale on bamboo lab?" And there's going to be uh, comments saying, "Like, don't expect that. It's probably never going to happen." I mean, they're they're like super popular. From what I remember, for the longest time, like there were there were like there was like at least a three four week wait list to get one. So for them to put on sale. From a from a business standpoint, might not make much sense because like if there's already so much demand that they can't keep up, why make it cheaper? Mm -hmm. But it looks like um they they really want to. I'm not sure whether they're trying to just play into the hype or just want to uh, give back to the community. But they are um, giving some pretty big discounts on their on their printers right now. Yeah, and we have uh we we actually have both models P1P and X1C. Uh, the, we just 
launched uh, actually the review of Bamboo Lab X1C. Paul has <laughs> wrote a hundred thousand words of the uh, of the <laughs> review. All of it is firsthand experience. So for anyone curious whether you should get the model or not, check out the review that Paul and team has have written on uh, 3dgearzone.com. It's definitely a long read, uh, but uh, if you are on the fence or if you're wondering what the quality of the actual uh, printer is like, uh, you can see some of the prints, how they came out, right? And again, uh, since we have both models uh, available right now, we're actually using it for our own uh, 3D printing service business, Design Dynamics, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, it's our kind of, uh, what, two out of four, I would say, printers that we really enjoy working with for that particular uh, pur purpose? Yeah, like the, um, the, the, the X1 and the P1P, they're, they're just great printers overall, easy to yeah. use. Yep. And then if you look at the site, you can see all the pictures that we, we've taken of, of some of the prints and the quality is just like top tier. So yeah. this is definitely something that we would recommend if you, you know, if this fits their needs, like this is, this is, this is a great printer. Yeah, and P1P review is coming uh, coming up soon as well. We're a little bit late <laughs> to the game. It's already been in the market for a while, but uh, it's definitely first um, first hand experience. So if you're curious, check it out. And uh, the other printer that uh, <laughs> Paul is raving about is K1 K1 Max uh, uh, by Creality. So they do have uh, what they call blowout sales going on as well. Anything interesting here? Anything worthwhile checking out for the for the folks uh, to to actually go and buy on their website? Yeah. So um, this is also a little bit surprising because uh, the K1 and the K1 Max, so Creality's kind of answer to the the Bamboo Labs X1. Um, uh, they they're they're also on sale. I think you can get like some really substantial say a uh, savings for for both the k1 max and the k1 if i remember correctly the k1 is just like i think i think they they lower down to something like 399 yeah so that is an absolute steal for for something that can compete with with uh, a bamboo labs printer and then if you need something bigger um the k1 max is also on sale so i think it's like 719 dollars something like a lot cheaper than than when it was first released and um one good thing about the max even though it is quite a bit more pricey than the normal k1 is um it is a lot bigger it's bigger than the um the bamboo labs printer so if you need something bigger this is your best bet in town at the moment until you know, you know, Bamboo decides to make their XL or whatever they want to call it. Yeah. So with Bamboo Lab, P1P and X1C are the same size, right? Yeah. Uh, the difference would be obviously the quality of the you know of, of the devices that are attached and whatnot to the printer. Whereas K1 and K1 Max, that's not the case. Right. They're We're talking pretty about much volume difference. Yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. The K1 Max does have a few extra smarts in it compared to the K1. Uh -huh. But um, the the basic frame of it, like the basic components, that are all the same. It's just K1 Max is bigger in every dimension. Yeah. Okay. So if you're looking to print something larger, K1 Max is a go. Uh, it's seventeen hundred seven 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 hundred twenty dollars. Uh, P1P is at five hundred thirty nine dollars, but KX1C is at thirteen hundred or a thousand dollars. So again, uh, various different deals. Uh, definitely something to think about. Which one to get? Uh, would you would you have a kind of a direction for those thinking? Hey, should I get a K1 Max or let's say comparably to P1P? I think in terms of pricing, uh, what would be the the dis, uh, the kind of the, the, the decision making that. process here in terms of which one to get so it it really boils down to needs and wants um so if you need something to, if you need to print something big like you know a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter object the k1 max is um the only option the best option right now because none of these other printers can print as big as it um if you want something that's just plug and play um once uh, and, and it, it works amazingly well out of the box um has a really nice app support the bamboo labs is um is going to be your 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 best bet in town um the k1 the smaller version of the creality really comes into play when uh you want to tinker a little bit about with it just because it is a uh, creality has open sourced its firmware so this is there 
the community right now is kind of really behind Creality, trying to have mods and upgrades and all this kind of stuff. So if you're you're into the tinkering scene, the K1 is a great option. It's it's and it's also the most inexpensive option out there. So it prints great, uh, prints good, great out of the box. But if you want that, you know, you want you have that tinkering itch to you, that's a great platform to work on. Yeah, and the K1 printer review is going coming up uh, is going to be published today on 3dgearzone.com so definitely check that out but we uh, we've tested k1 uh, and uh, we we have used x1c in p1p so whenever paul is saying k1 is a reliable model that's based on the uh, actual experience and uh, as, 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 as someone who operates business 3d printing service business we actually print on demand for others uh, com- you know commercially and uh, just to consumer direct to consumer uh, the we we really care making to make sure that we have as little headaches as possible maintaining this and going as fast as we can in terms of the output so k1 has has proven to work very well and uh, it is it is a good competition to p1p and x1c you, you, would, you would that's what we would say uh so yeah that's great deals uh on creality you can see there's a 20 30 percent dollars off so definitely check out their store uh there is also black friday madness going on at elegu <laughs> So Elegoo is one of our top picks for like SLA resin printers. And um, they also want to make sure that um, they get your dollars on Black Friday. So um, just like Creality and um, and Bamboo, they are slashing the prices on their very popular SLA printers. So the one that really stuck up to me, um, Scott, if you want to scroll back up to the top, on the left-hand side, the Mars 3 Pro, um, this is actually one of our top 3d printers that we have reviewed at 3d gear zone it's one of my favorite ones for anything for for small figurines and they just slashed the price down to 150 dollars. so that's a huge amount um saved so that's great um and then on the other one um the in in the middle of the the set in two this is also our favorite mid-size um, th- uh, resin 3D printer. So great print quality. And now is that a bit, at a, also at a steal at just $320. I remember when it first came out, I think it was like six, $700. Now at $320, it's, it's an absolute steal. Okay, so if we ignore the price, Mars 3 Pro, well, what about Mars 4? So the Mars, so one thing that we're not a fan of with Elegu is the naming scheme because um, Mars 4, specifically this one, Mars 4 Max 6K, is not necessarily a direct upgrade of the Mars 3. Uh Um, It is, it's bigger. um, Very, it's kind of like in between the the Saturn two, the Saturns and the Mars. Um, It's just not quite in there. So it's kind of this. uh, middle child between the Mars and the Saturn. Okay. Um, and it's just kind of like, it has a bigger bigger print volume, but not necessarily bigger and better than, say, the Mars 3. Okay, so if we were to compare Mars 3 to Mars 4 for the... If you want bigger, I guess Mars 4 is good, but if you want quality pretty much the same but for lower price mars 3 is the to go is the go right yep. you said it's your yep. favorite one what about mars 3 versus saturn 2 i just want to make sure that because we're throwing so many options at folks again you know if, if they do decide that they want some an upgrade or a new 3, uh, sla printer for for uh, this year uh, what what they should think about when choosing between mars 3 and saturn 2 except for the price obviously so if you're looking to print something bigger, so the Saturn II has a 10 inch um, screen. So you can, versus a six inch screen on the Mars 3. So um, that is basically the um, differentiating factor. So if you want to print something bigger, yeah. go for the Saturn II. If you want something smaller, go for the Mars. Okay, yeah. Okay, so and it speaks volumes when uh, Paul says it's his favorite Mars 3 Pro. Uh, we we do print a lot of uh, miniatures and board game pieces for 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 clients as well as we're thinking of doing our own board game. So we're testing uh, our own uh, prints uh, for our own game here. So Mars 3 Pro is definitely something to look at. We love Elegoo for SLA. Uh, it's, a, it's a fabulous product. Uh, and their printers are fabulous. They work, they do a really good job. And anytime we have a miniature printed, uh, we're always just impressed. <laughs> so if you're in the market for some new 
uh, SLA printer, uh, the Mars 3 Pro is 57% off, which is crazy. For $150, you can start printing just pretty much tomorrow as soon as they ship it to you. Pretty cool. Um, and yeah. if you stay tuned, uh, we do actually have an Elegoo FDM printer in for review. So I, me and my team, we're, we're currently reviewing it right now. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully the review will come out soon. Yeah, so lots of cool stuff coming out. Uh, as we said, the the uh, Elegoo brand is very much known for SLA printers. And if even if you look at our own rankings, top five, four out of top five printers, uh, SLA printers are Elegoo. Uh, for FDM, uh, Creality and Bamboo Lab are definitely taking the top spots. Uh, that being said, uh, in the future episodes, we definitely want to make sure that we dive deeper into each brand and each model. So we're thinking to create dedicated episodes about Bamboo Lab X1C, Creality K1 and K1 Max and kind of diving maybe even a little bit into the history, but mostly to speaking to the quality of the prints and the maybe, you know, what kind of expectations you should have before buying the printer, making sure that if you do end up owning one, you buy it and uh, for the right reasons and right purposes. So stay tuned for that. Um, anything else to add, Paul? Anything that we maybe forgot? Um, not sure if you still have the link over there, but, um, you know, if you buy one of these printers you also need either resin or filament to go along with it um so one last um uh a uh, company that we we found some really good black friday deals so far is actually sunlu so sunlu um we we've, we've reviewed a lot of their resins in the past and we found them um great like they're 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 pr they're easy to use uh the quality is great and even their value was really good, but during Black Friday, um, they're, they get even more. Uh, they get even more value. So, um, typically with resin, I think it's if you scroll a little bit down, Scott, you'll probably get to the resin part. Yep, over here. Um, typically, resin is something like like um, uh, like thirty to sixty dollars um, USD per 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 kilogram or per liter. Uh, you uh, in in the case of um, Sunlu, I think you save something like like. 10 15 dollars per liter if you if, in, in in black friday so that's a that's a lot saved so um so if you're if you're into resin we recommend sunlu that's that's one brand that we we use on a daily basis for for our daily 3d printing um and they have some great sales going on right now for black friday yeah, I can see some typos on the website, Black Friday of DM deals, which probably should be <laughs> yeah. away. And when you don't send, but when you spend, uh, hey, Sanlu, might need to check some of your copywriting. <laughs> but that being said, the quality of the product is great. Uh, as Paul mentioned, we do have reviews of Sanlu products on uh, uh, resins on our website. So if you're not sure what to, uh, which one to buy, definitely check it out. They have a bunch of different models, you know, uh, for very various different purposes and you just got to make sure that you're picking the right one. And you can see pretty significant savings. Uh, if you do spend anywhere between $150 to $350, you can save anywhere between $75 and $200. So stock it up for the next uh, year until the next Black Friday. Uh, if you are in the market to print more and more of those miniatures, and obviously we love printing miniatures. Uh, it's something that we get really excited about, developing our own miniatures and then see seeing them come to life. Uh, and uh, we're not saying that you should do that for Warhammer 40k if you're a, if you're, if you're a fan but hey why buy official when you can print it <laughs> Warhammer if you want to sponsor the podcast be sure to do so we'll change our maybe change our mind here <laughs> uh, that, that's just a, a little bit of a dad joke uh, so that on, on that note I think we pretty much covered everything so far mm -hmm. uh, all the latest news that we've come across lots going on once again Eligu launched the Kickstarter campaign, over $5 million raised, over 2,000 uh, backers. So if you haven't jumped on the trend yet, maybe check it out. If you are looking for a large size 3D printer, pretty much the only one in the consumer market at this point. Um, 
and it can print four objects at, uh, at the same time, not multicolor, but uh, can print four objects in different color each. Uh, there is Bamboo Labs A1 Mini. If you're in the market for something that's reliable, small, maybe for your child, for your classroom, that would be an interesting model to play around. Maker World uh, competes with printables, competes with uh, cool 3D. We're not yet sure if we are the biggest fr uh, fans. We're not saying that it's, you know, there is a, I would say this is more of an incremental change where it goes directly from the actual marketplace to the uh, to the slicer. Definitely an improvement, but not necessarily something that's <laughs> going to break the industry here. But if you're a huge fan of Maker World, drop a comment, let us know how you feel about it. Or if you hate it, I definitely want to hear it. I love drama. Um, Elegoo Jupiter is on the market as well. Something that Elegoo came up just recently. It's already on sale and uh, Black Friday deals. So I think we've covered pretty much everything. Uh, this is this is exciting time to be in 3D printing industry. More and more people are getting into it. That things are changing and shifting. So super exciting uh, for for those of you who are listening. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll be back with another episode next week. Until then, leave us leave us your feedback, and uh, we'll be sure to to let you know if that could spin up a brand new episode just to answer your questions. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your week, and check out the 3 dgearzonecom for more information. <laughs>